Welcome to the Voice of Islam. The Voice of Islam is a weekly radio program organized by the Islamic Council of Jamaica, the umbrella organization for the Muslim community in Jamaica, to propagate the message of Islam, dispel the common misconceptions about Islam, and facilitate a medium to provide the Islamic perspective on topical issues and alternative solutions. You may contact the Islamic Council of Jamaica at 648-9545. That's 648-9545. You are listening to The Voice of Islam. Before we begin, let's take a few minutes to listen to the recitation of verses selected from the final revelation to mankind, Al-Quran. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذكن في الكتاب مريم إذ تبذت من أهلها مكانا شرقيا فاتخذت من دونهم حجابا فأرسلنا إليها روحنا فتمثل لها بشرا سويا قالت إني أعوذ بالرحمن منك إن كنت تقيا قال إن إنما أنا رسول ربك لأهب لك غلاما زكيا And mention O Muhammad in the book the story of Mary when she withdrew from her family to a place towards the east and she took in seclusion from them a screen then we sent to to her our angel and he represented himself to her as a well-proportioned man she said indeed i seek protection in the most merciful from you so leave me if you should be fair enough allah he said i am only the messenger of your lord to give you news of a pure boy she said how can i have a boy while no one has touched me and i have not been unchaste he said, Thus it will be. Your Lord says, It is easy for me, and we will make him a sign to the people and a mercy from us, and it is a matter already decreed. So she conceived him, and she withdrew with him to a remote place. You are listening to the voice of Islam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. The conversation is normally very interesting when non-Muslims are informed that we as Muslims believe in all the prophets and messengers from Adam to Noah, Abraham, David, Solomon, Moses, Jesus, and the last of all the messengers, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi may, may peace and blessings be upon all of them. Allah says within the Quran, that we as Muslims we believe in Allah and we believe in what has been revealed to us through the Quran and in what has been revealed to Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and his children and in what has been given to Moses and Jesus and what has been given to the prophets from their Lord we make no difference we do not differentiate between any of them and to him we submit ourselves and to Allah we submit ourselves. And for clarification, Allah is the rightful name for the only God deserving of worship. And the Quran is the last and final revelation given to mankind. And so Allah says this within the Quran that there is no difference between the messengers. And so as Muslims, we do not differentiate between the prophets and messengers in terms of the message they brought. We hold reasonably and steadfastly that even though the messengers were many, the message was one. And that is to worship God and God alone. Allah further says within the Quran in relation to this, where the messengers, their message was one. Allah says, it is not possible for a man that Allah gives him the book. So Allah chooses from among men, prophets and messengers, and Allah reveals unto him a book. And Allah gives, his, gives him wisdom and prophethood. Then he starts saying to the people, become my worshippers aside from Allah. Rather, he would say, be men of the Lord as you have been teaching the book and as you have been learning it.
And so it is impossible that Allah would choose prophets and messengers throughout the ages. And then these prophets and messengers would say to the people, become my worshippers, aside from Allah. Rather, the prophets and messengers, they would all say, worship Allah. None of them called to the worship of themselves. Not Jesus, not Moses, not Abraham. So when people say that Jesus as a prophet and messenger from God, that he was given the gospel, which is the word of God. When people say that um, they ascribe worship to Jesus or they worship Jesus, as Muslims we hold that Jesus was a messenger from God and as such his message was one. It was similar to the messages of the previous prophets and messengers uh, which is to worship one God and so Jesus called people to the worship not of himself but to the worship of one God and as Muslims we believe that and, as, and I want to bring your attention to us a very special time that we're in now and we're in a, a time that if we were to reflect on history a major event took place in the time of one of these messengers uh, specifically Moses and his involvement with the children of Israel uh, we are well aware of Moses as a prophet and messenger of God and that's a given however the Quran depicts the life of Moses in so much detail and his name is mentioned as a matter of fact the the name of Moses is mentioned 131 times within the Quran, making him the most mentioned prophet in the Quran. Abraham, another prophet, another messenger mentioned in the Quran, his name was mentioned 25 times. Jesus, his name was also mentioned. The name Jesus was mentioned 25 times also. Well, well, we know that the Quran was revealed in Arabic, so these names, Abraham in Arabic, it is Ibrahim, and Jesus, this is not Arabic, um, in Arabic, Jesus' name would be Isa. So the name of Isa was mentioned 25 times by name within the Quran. Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, the last and final messenger, his name was mentioned four times within the Quran. Um, compared to the to the other prophets and messengers, this is not many. However, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, the last messenger to mankind, he was referred to the most as this was a revelation that he received. This was his revelation. But in terms of names, Moses, his name appeared the most within the Quran to the point where the scholars who examined the Quran they would say that the story of Moses occurred so many times within the Quran that it is as if this Quran was going to be a story about Moses. So we have a lot to learn. And so I want you to tune in and pay some attention to this great event that took place in the life of Moses. And so let's, and so let's go back to Moses by the way his rightful name was Musa so within the Quran his rightful name is Musa so Musa is the Arabic name for Moses so let's go back and look at this very important event that took place thousands of years ago you are listening to the, the voice, voice of, of Islam. Islam so Moses Musa may God's blessings be upon him he goes and he talks to Pharaoh and there are so many lessons that can be ascertained from how he spoke to Pharaoh. Firstly, Moses believed in one Dege Dege God. And he told Pharaoh about the importance of believing in one Dege Dege God. And the importance of putting your trust in him and he's the, he's the God of all of us. And there are so many lessons from him facing up with the magicians. But I want to take us to one of the key moments that happens, Moses and the children of Israel, Bani Israel, in the Quran, the creator, he tells us that they saw an opportunity to escape from Pharaoh. And so they did. And then the creator, he tells us in 
chapter 26, verse 60. So they pursued them at sunrise. So Pharaoh and his army getting word that Moses and the children of Israel, Bani Israel, that they are making their way. They're, they're running, they're escaping. They set off after them. They went after them, right? And what, what, what happens after is they arrive at the sea. And when they arrive at the sea, the creator Allah, he tells us in chapter 26, verse 61, he says, and when the two companies, that is Moses and his people, saw one another as Moses and his people and the, the, the Pharaoh and his army, when they saw one another, so his people start seeing the Pharaoh and the people galloping from afar. So their heart is struck with fear. Says, oh my God, that brother has soon reach with me now. That brother has soon reach with me now. And so they all said, listen to what the, the people said to Moses. And in the Quran, Allah uses the word, Inna la mudrakun. They said, which is the Arabic in the English, it means, indeed, we are about to get overtaken. As we say in Jamaica, we're done for now. We're done here now. This is what they said. They thought it was over for them. Because in front of them is the sea. And behind them is the same army they were running away from. So what are they going to do? They turn to Moses. The fact that they turn to Moses is another lesson that we should all take. That from time to time, we should be the source of inspiration and guidance for people. A whole heap of time, people are going to lose confidence in what is going on in the world and this happened and things that happen and it just seem like chaos from left to right. You have to be the source of inspiration and guidance for people. And so what does Moses, what does Musa, I mean, may God's blessing be upon him, what does he say? He said, Kalla. Inna ma'i Rabbi sayahdini. He said, in the English, it says, never. Not at all. I don't buy that. I don't ascribe to the ideology of giving up. He says, without a doubt, my Lord is with me. He is going to guide me. So the, again, we hear it, we get this lesson, the same reliance that his mother had. That is the reliance that he, 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 he calls upon the creator now and says, indeed, my Lord is with me and he is going to guide me. So you see, he, he, he never gives up hope that the creator is going to ultimately find, provide him with a medium by which he's going to get out of this situation. So he inspires his people. So a whole heap of time when we feel like we are in situations that we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, we have to understand, and we learn this from the story of Moses and the children of Bani Israel, that this, it is in those dark times that we have to turn to the creator of the heavens and the earth. So then what does, the creator said, what does Allah say? In the next chapter that comes, the next verse that comes after it, the creator, he says, then we inspired to Moses, strike with your staff the sea. And then it continues, and they parted, and each portion was like a great towering mountain. So one of the first questions we ask ourselves is this, just imagine that imagery. Imagine standing at the port of the sea and the, you, 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 can, you, can, you can hear the galloping, you can hear Pharaoh and his armies are coming. And so Moses inspired. What does striking with a staff, how does that metaphysically, how is that going to split the sea? But the lesson the creator of the heavens and the earth is teaching all of us here from this story is do your part. 
You already have reliance on the creator of heaven and earth. You already re- believe that he's going to find a way out for you. So now you need to do your part. Strike the sea. Get up in the morning. Go out and look for the work. Do the hustling. And trust the creator is going to find a way for you. You can't sit on at home and wonder and think and, and hope. And pray, boy, I pray this day. No, you have to do the work and, and put your trust in the creator of the heavens and the earth. You are listening to the voice of Islam. In this segment, we'd like to discuss a topic. You know, what does the Bible say about the comforter? Now, this is a very interesting topic because there are many persons who believe there is a dichotomy between Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and Muslims or Islam. Some people actually believe that it's like a competition, you know. The Muslims, their prophet is Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him. And the Christians, their prophet is Jesus, alayhi salam, peace be upon him. Of course, we know that some persons will say he is beyond a prophet. But this is really what we want to look at today. We want to have a discussion. And it's something that's quite interesting. Because really, as Muslims, if a Muslim does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, then such a person is not a Muslim. That is correct. If we don't believe in the coming of Jesus, peace be upon him, if we don't believe in his miraculous birth, if we don't believe in him speaking in the cradle, the miracles that he performed throughout his life, his ascension to heaven and that he will return, then such a person cannot claim to be a Muslim because this is a fundamental belief of Islam, a fundamental belief. And this is why we really want to have a little discussion on some of the pointers that, you know, many persons may not be aware of. So because, of course, there are many Christians who proclaim that they believe in the Bible. However, sometimes upon further investigation, a vast majority, we may say, cherry-pick the verses that suit them and reject the core teachings of the text. For example, um, in defending this position, we can see that Christ himself said, I came not to change the law but to fulfill. And this is according to the Bible in Matthew 5, verses 17 to 18. Because he was questioned and his response was, I came not to change the law of Moses, but I came to fulfill. So he didn't come to make fundamental changes to the law. So the commandments were there. He didn't come to make fundamental changes. One example that comes to mind is when persons see, we know of the famous story about the adulteress, that this woman was brought by the men. She was, you know, manhandled, harassed, and taken, dragged to Christ. And of course he said, you know, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. First stone. There are many who use this to say he, you know, that law, he cancelled it out, that he wrote it off. But it's a clear misunderstanding, of course, or misinterpretation of that scenario. But that's not what we're here to discuss today. We can speak about it in another segment. Now, one of the most important missions, we know that when Christ came, that he came with a mission. And actually, his coming, he said something that is extremely important. So referring to the Bible itself, John 16, verse 7, where he is reported to have said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now listen again. This is John 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. This is John 16, verse 7. Now there's a general perception, general perception that this verse is referring to the Holy Ghost. However, let's read this verse again. Let's, let's reflect on it. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go. Listen, listen. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. Listen to that. 
If I don't go, the comforter will not come. Now, there are many who believe this is the Holy Ghost, but let's think about it. The com this Holy Ghost existed already, so this must be another being. It could not have been the same. Because before Christ, we can see some examples. And because, you know, many persons have different versions, I'm just going to give the verses and you can do your research. So, for example, the Holy Ghost that is being spoken of is before Christ, we can see Luke 1, verse 15, Luke 1, verse 41, and Luke 1, verse 67. So, in Luke alone, verses 15, verses 41, and verses 67, these all are showing us that definitely this Holy Ghost existed before Christ. You are listening to the voice of Islam. So, the, so these verses, we will show that clearly Christ was here and Christ said, if I go not away, the comforter will not come. So clearly this could not have been the Holy Ghost. How about even after um, Christ's birth? I'm going to refer to Luke again. There are so many examples, but let's refer to Luke again. In Luke 2, verse 26, and again, I do, I'm not even going to relate the incidents. I'm just going to relate the verse for you to do your research. Clearly, the Holy Ghost existed at that time. In Luke 3, verse 22, again, the Holy Ghost existed at that time. So this verse in John 16, verse 7, was, re was referring to another comforter. So we see Luke 1, verse 15, verse 41, and verse 67. Then after the birth of Christ, we see Luke 2, verse 26, and Luke 3, verse 22. All incidents showing that indeed that the Holy Ghost existed at the time of Christ and even before the birth of Christ. Christ was definitely, Jesus, peace be upon him, was definitely speaking of another comforter. And we see this in John 14, verse 16, where he says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Again, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So now, due to the constant substitution of the word spirit and comforter, many persons have linked this and interpreted, interpreted this as referring to the Holy Ghost. However, Let's look at a verse that clarifies this, this whole spirit comforter. So let's look at a verse that clarifies this. 1 John 4, verse 1, where it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Again, listen, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. This is 1 John 4, verse 1. So this is clearly showing us that indeed, this spirit that is being referred to is a prophet. A prophet is a physical, tangible being. You are listening to the voice of Islam. I'd like for us to reflect upon a very brief glimpse in the life of an extremely successful individual. And it's no other than Prophet Abraham Ibrahim alayhi salam. Because his life was a phenomenal success. From childhood up to adulthood. And he is known, subhanAllah, recognized as the father of the monotheistic religions. So Christians, Jews, and Muslims alike revere him. Yes, different levels. Many have very wrong conceptions, very wrong perceptions about his life and who he was. But they all agree he was righteous. But some of the accusations that they make, of course, those labels are unwarranted, unfounded. No evidence, baseless. But I'd like for us to reflect upon the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam, especially in this month of Dhul Hijjah. Especially in this month, within the first ten days, which are recognized as the best ten days 
of the entire year. But subhanAllah, even the Eid that we are going to celebrate in a few days, it is recognizing the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The Muslims lining up for Hajj, Minna, Arafah, and these different Muzdalifa, and going through all these places, making tawaf, all of this, subhanAllah, the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Thank you all for listening to The Voice, Voice of, of Islam, Islam, a weekly radio program organized by the Islamic Council of Jamaica to propagate the message of Islam, dispel the common misconceptions about Islam, and facilitate a medium to provide Islamic perspective on topical issues and alternative solutions. Remember, you may collect a free Quran, yes, a free Quran by emailing us, sending a text message, or visiting any of our locations. Please send in your questions and comments to islamradiojm at gmail.com. That's I-S-L-A-M radio J-M at gmail.com. Or by text message to 892-1350. That's 892-1350. You may also visit our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Islamic Council of Jamaica. Or find us on Instagram at ICOJ underscore official. Or you may listen to a past episode on our YouTube channel, Islamic Council of Jamaica. You may also visit any of the following locations. Islamic Council of Jamaica, 24 Camp Road, Kingston 4. Masjidul Aziz, Portmore Central Plaza, West Tradeway, Portmore. Masjidul Rahman, Windsor Road, Spanish Town. Islamic Dawa Center. 1 Makati Street, Montego Bay. Masjid al Hakim, 138 Main Street, Ochrios. Masjid al Sabr, Albany, St. Mary. Masjid Hussein, 3 Miles River, Westmoreland. Masjid al Haq, New Green Road, Mandeville. Masjid al Nur, Port Maria, St. Mary. Masjid al Ihsan, West End Road, Negril. Masjid al Taqwa, Newell, St. Elizabeth. Masjid Ibrahim, Riversdale, St. Catherine. Masjid as 26 Miriam Way, Montego Bay. Peace be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>